Uh, one of the early problems here could belong to Ricky Rudd, who had a good qualifying run and runs well on a road course. Potential overheating problem on his tied Ford. Temperatures well above the 220, 225 mark. They told him under caution to keep your nose clean, get as much air to it as possible. To Jerry Punch. Well, on Ricky Rudd's tied team, they had to make one change because they lost one crew member to a knee injury. So Ron Liddell, who changes tires on the three truck in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, was flown here after the truck race yesterday at Watkins Glen by the 10 team so he could change the rear tires today. He's an assistant engine man on that three truck team, but they knew he was good. They needed to get him here. They worked out a deal with Richard Childress, and they flew him in just so they would have what they called a good tire changer because they lost a guy to injury for this race here at Sears Point. John Kernan. Let's take a look at what happened to Bobby Labonte. We speculated that maybe he got a little tap or a look from Ricky Rudd's in-car camera. There's Jimmy Spencer right in front of him, dips down on the inside of Bobby Labonte, and right there was a little bit of contact made, and it sent Bobby spinning around down on the asphalt. Looked like Jimmy Spencer hit a bump or something. All of a sudden, his car just washed out right in the side of the interstate batteries Pontiac. There's Tony Stewart. There's Rusty, Joe Nemechek, and Ricky Rudd, who faded for a while, but now is charging back toward the front. Started in 15th position, and we can see trying to get by Rusty Wallace. He's out on the inside. Looks like he'll take that fifth spot away. Sixth spot away, I'm sorry, because Nemechek has been able to get by Rusty Wallace as well. Rusty, same thing happened before. He runs about 15, 20 laps and starts fading. He yeah, gets uh, the tires heated up. His chassis just doesn't seem to work as well as it does when the tires are cooler and newer. Rudd crash, as we call with Jeffrey Bodine last year on lap 89 in turn number 11. Rudd was running second at the time and ended up in 28th position. And Ricky Rudd takes another position. He's up to fifth now, passing Joe Nemechek. <laughs> and Nemechek tried to come back because Rudd got in the corner just a little bit too hard. But you can see was not successful as we look at the back bumper of Ricky Rudd's car. Comes the tide floor through turn number 10. Headed down the straightaway. Hard braking right here. That's the entrance to the pits there on the right. Jimmy Spencer holding off Ricky Rudd's challenge for that sixth position who would have thought that <laughs> even jimmy spencer said last week no we're going to sears going next week i won't be very good here he is in sixth position holding off one of the best ricky rudd well right now because i think rudd when he goes down a corner might be able to do something about that well, this caution, uh, certainly a bad break for Ken Schrader and company, but it could be a huge break for some of these guys that were right on their fuel window. Most of them now believe they will be able to reach the finish and will not run out of fuel. That's disappointing to a couple of teams down here that thought they might be able to outlast everybody on fuel. But now most of these teams at the front of the field believe they can reach the finish without fitting for fuel. Ricky Rudd has had a good day. He's in sixth position. This side of his car looks okay, but when you look at the left front, it's a little banged up. Mm -hmm. He may certainly make contact with someone. He apparently is not hurting him too bad. <laughs> Rub the letters off the front of the car there, and it's bent that sheet metal back onto very close to the tire. But apparently there's no rub, and that's the good thing. Down to Bill Weber. And he uh, told his crew just when the caution came out when they were discussing whether or not they were going to pit that basically he's responsible for that. That's kind of how he got his way through all that traffic after the last green flag using uh, the chrome horn, as they say. So Ricky's responsible for that damage on his own. Said it probably didn't help the car a whole lot, but he had to get to the front or as close as he could. And uh, they figured they're in good shape, and obviously they can reach the finish now. Gets off course. Wow. Just about lost control. There we see Bobby Labonte into the tires and colliding with Nemechek. Come on, come on, come on, come on. You're okay. He's still running. And Nemechek okay. spins. I guess sure. the, Nemechek has a flat tire or something. He spins on turn 11. Will it bring out a caution? Yes. yes. Is. Caution is out. Full course caution. They'll have to get the tires back into position in turn 11 for one thing besides the fact that Nemechek spun but he has gotten going again now from Ricky Rudd's onboard camera it's 
Labonte and Nemechek just ahead of him. Nemechek and Labonte both smoking tires, trying to get their car slowed down. Both got in the corner a little bit too hard. So Ricky Rudd will move up to four spot now. Oh, man. What did put tires there for, Bobby said? <laughs> oh. Hard contact. Ward Burton hard into the tires. As is Rudd. Man, that was quite a crash, and it occurred right in front of our broadcast position here, near turn number 10. They are racing to the line, and Gordon, of course, will win the battle there. And with 107 laps completed, now the caution is out once again. Rudd's trying to drive his car out of there. That's good that he's and okay. Ford Burton is starting his yeah, car, too. So, and so apparently both drivers are okay, so that's good news. But both of those race cars are torn up. Yep, they're they don't, used. They don't know how bad they are. There is a considerable amount of... Uh, and right now, Ned, they probably don't care. <laughs> a lot of tires have been uh, moved onto the racetrack as the crowd cheers as Ward Burton and Ricky Rudd both pull away because that was a very hard impact. There's Ward making his way to pit road. We'll take a look at a replay and see what happened. Oh, Rusty Wallace come gets through the dirt, and Ricky Rudd trying to avoid Rusty Wallace going back on the racetrack gets off the racetrack. When he goes back across, that's when Ward Burke came in and banged into him. Mm. Heavy down, sir. Yeah, another couple of guys who had really run good here all day, kept their nose reasonably clean, had good finishes going, both uh, Ricky Rudd and Ward Burton. Now they're going to red flag the race. Because it's going to take a while to clean this up. Just like at Richmond last year, Ned, when, when DJ was leading the race, it's going to take a while to clean this mess up. These fans in California, NASCAR says, will not be deprived of a green flag finish to this race. And we'll show you exactly what happened. It's up in front of the there was see Rudd, and here's going to come Ward Burton, and across the racetrack comes. Wow. And, mm. oh, and we see Jerry Mayfield's going to have some damage as well. He got hit on the front as well as looked like up on the deck lid. Ward Burton's car got airborne before coming back down on all four. Now watch Rusty Wallace. He's going to miss a corner here. Right there, Rusty goes straight, and when he comes back on the racetrack, Ricky's trying to avoid him and runs off in the dirt himself and just cannot ever get him back under control. And then, boom, there's the impact with Burton who goes down and slams hard into the tire barrier and the guardrail. And that's the situation at Sears Point. Ricky Rudd, a wild one here in the final laps. What happened up there? Well, I guess what triggered it, Rusty got off the racetrack up through the S's. He missed the first left-hander and went out through the dirt. Just didn't even try to turn. He just went on straight on through the dirt. When he did that, I saw it. I said, should I back Should I back off or should I drive around? I said, I could seven laps to go, whatever it was. There was not many laps left. I said, if I drive around him, you know, there's another spot. That would have been third spot. Well, he didn't get it. He couldn't get it. He didn't have no control when he was getting ready to come back on the racetrack. So I saw him getting ready to come back on. So I went wide to miss it. When I did, I got out in the marbles, and then uh, it was all over with. You had kept that tide ride so clean that they had a good run going. We didn't have a mark on the car. You know, the car was running well. And, uh, you know, it's kind of mixed emotions. You know, we just can't seem to buy a, a good finish here this year. And, but on the other side of that, here we are. Really could have been a factor for the win if uh, those two in front of us, the three in front of us, got to banging. And uh, like I said, I just just was moving by Rusty for third. And had I been content just to say, hey, okay, I'm going to ride here and I'm going to finish fourth and have a good day, I'd have still been out there running. But I said, no, I, you know, the, the competitor in me said, hey, there's a spot. Go take it. And uh, I was still trying to win this race. And, you know, kind of in a way I could be mad at myself on the other side. But I'm happy that the tied forward Taurus run good. Uh, and it was in the top five, top ten most all day. And we're happy that he's okay, Bob.